Supposed evidence for evolution number three, the fossil record. That's right, Mr. Butt himself is back and he's off his meds. Probably. Uh, you would have to be to think you have another four reasons that evolution is the big stupid, considering the last two were completely worthless. And if that was him putting his best foot forward, I don't exactly have confidence in the rest. I mean, seriously, he's going for the fossil record now. Something that is literally fantastic evidence for evolution. You know, I'm starting to think this guy doesn't really know what evidence is. You know what we're told is that you can look into the fossil record and you can find proof that organisms evolved over millions of years? Yeah, they tell us that because it's true. The fossil record absolutely contains evidence for evolution. Now, it doesn't contain all of it, obviously, but very rarely does any evidence for anything tell the complete story, because that's not how it works. But when you line up the facts, they will tell a story that is consistent with those facts. And not the other way round, where someone might tell a story and then hammer the facts in a vain attempt to make them fit into that story. Like, oh, I don't know, you do with the Bible. Supposedly we're told that you can find transformational organisms that prove this animal evolved into some other kind of animal. Transformational organisms. Transformational organism, dude. What the hell are you talking about, transformational organisms? Do you mean transitional forms? That's such an amazingly wrong bit of terminology that I can only think of two possible reasons you would have used it. Either you're using the wrong terminology on purpose so that people watching this in earnest won't be able to find accurate information, or you're so arrogant and stupid that you assume that you know all the right words and never even bother to look anything up, you know, because of how right you are all the time. Damn. But if you were to take that seriously and you were to go to the fossil record, what you would find is that those transformational fossils are missing on a grand scale. God, you make it sound like the fossil record is a f***ing place. Let me guess, what you mean is that there isn't a transitional fossil for every possible species. Therefore, goddamn real, Bible does the true. I mean, apart from just no, you would be missing the forest for, well, you being too stupid to open your goddamn eyes and assuming you've gone blind. Because yes, there most certainly aren't all the transitions in the fossil record. They are not exactly super duper common. Fossils, for as many as we have, are actually a fairly rare and exceptional occurrence in and of themselves that require very specific circumstances at death for them to happen. But despite that, you know what there are in the fossil record? Uh, some transitional forms, as in evidence that transitions from one form to another happen. You know what we call that? Fucking evidence of evolution, you absolute dunce cap. In fact, evolutionist Mark Ridley stated that no real evolutionist, whether gradualist or punctuationist, uses the fossil record as evidence in favor of the theory of evolution as opposed to special creation. Now, why would he say that? Because it was 40 years ago, maybe? Because, yeah, that's right. This quote was literally made in June of 1981. And funnily enough, it's a little bit out of date at 42 years old, at least. That quote is older than the goddamn body that I inhabit, for crying out loud. The fact of the matter is, there have been numerous more transitions found since then. So even if this quote was a fair thing to say back in the time of neon pink spandex perms, things have changed just a tad. That's the wonderful thing about the internet, really. When you quote something from a million years ago, I can, you know, check. It does make you wonder why they have to drag this shit from so long ago to quote-unquote prove their points. Hmm. Well, he would say that because when you look at the fossil record... Don't pretend you have ever looked at any kind of record that hasn't come from some kind of 1920s jazz band. Oh, and who am I kidding? That's probably far too modern for his taste. I imagine his favourite song is Rock Being Smashed on Larger Rock by Grunk and the Uggs. You see organisms coming into the fossil record fully formed. 
You see a stage of stasis where they do not change, and then they go out of the fossil record without evolving into anything else. That was utter gibberish. What the hell was any of that supposed to mean exactly? The fossils in the fossil record don't change. Well, yeah, why the f would they? They're fossils. That's not what anyone is expecting. And yeah, that includes the transitional fossils. But guess what? That doesn't change the fact that they're clearly transitions, you fucking doofus. Exactly as the creation model would predict. The creation model doesn't predict shit. In fact, that's exactly why we know it's bullshit. There have been zero discoveries made using the creation model to make predictions, but loads have been made using evolution because it, you know, science is and is not made up storybooks for credulous idiots. Well, at least if they're taking it in any kind of literal way. And no, discoveries made by someone in the stupid ages who believed creation don't actually count because they weren't using that idea to actually figure anything out. You know, because you literally can't. The fossil record does not prove evolution. Again, on its own, certainly doesn't. But it is one in piles of shit that helps the whole bunch. But I'll tell you what it definitely doesn't help. Young Earth creation. That shit is shown to be utter nonsense by the fossil record. Because every single fossil in it is tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of years older than anything could possibly be on a planet that is apparently only 6,000 years old. Weird, that. Number four. The idea of mutations. Nice. Glad to see we're moving on a bit here. And mutations, eh? Not sure how one of the things that categorically causes changes in populations over time is gonna prove the opposite of that happening, but I'm sure whatever the reason for you saying that is, is gonna be super smart and not dumber than, well, you. No, no, that's fair, since just because he's saying it doesn't mean he came up with it. And whoever did that must have been a moron of galactic proportions. We're told that mutations prove you could get a certain single-celled organism to mutate over multiplied millions of years and bring about new information on a grand scale that given enough time, you could get a human being. Dude, you know that mutations aren't the only form of variation, right? Gene flow, non-random mating, genetic drift, all are things that can cause change in a population over time. Just letting you know, since you seem to be stuck on the idea that not only must a type of evidence prove evolution on its own, but that mechanisms must be the only way something works to boot. You know, it's almost like you have no idea what you're talking about or something. What's the problem with that line of reasoning? It ignores that there's more to evolution than that, and you do it a lot. One would think that you were doing it on purpose if it wasn't for the fact that you are so stupid that you actually, you know, repeat it out loud. I mean, seriously, you have to be pretty damn dumb to be able to say those words without choking to death on how ridiculous it all is. The problem is that mutations don't give us new information. Uh, what? What does that even mean? You have to define what you mean by new information if you're gonna say something like that. Otherwise, it's just meaningless prattle. And I guess that is what you do, but, you know, it would be nice if you didn't. Mutations can only take information that is already available and cause it to decay. Uh, that's a nonsensical statement, because even if it were true that mutations were simply destruction, and BT dubs, it absolutely isn't, Let's just say it was, for your sake. Seriously, information is information. And if the information changes, it's still information. Just different information. These words don't mean what you seem to think they mean. Like, let's say you took a photo of a tree, and then the tree you photographed was struck by lightning and burned quite severely. And you took another photo from the exact same place. Would you say those two photos contain different amounts of information? Probably not, although, if anything, the destroyed tree in the photos arguably contains more because there's extra information of the event that probably happened to it in there. So theoretically, that would be destruction causing more data. Mutations are an example of a loss of genetic information. That is simply not true and does not comport with the science. Well, you know, the real science that works. 
Not the fake science, only designed to make it sound like my book right about everything. And, you know, right spell R-I-T-E, of course. But no, mutations cause changes. Some good, some bad, but change nonetheless. And if we're going to define information as positive additions, then mutations absolutely do do that. And any claim to the opposite is either pure ignorance or an out-and-out lie. And maybe you would know it was wrong if you had, say, your comments on to correct you from time to time. All right, they're off for some reason. You know, it's probably because of all the honesty. Let me give you an example. And a heck of a one at that. Strap in. This is a long one. 45 whole seconds. I know, I just interrupt way too much. But you'll see why I've done this when we get to the end. For the last hundred years or more now, scientists have been studying fruit flies. They are great examples of how you can mutate an organism. We have been zapping these fruit flies with radiation and mutating them in chemical ways for more than a hundred years now. The reason that they are so valuable to study is because you can get a new generation every 14 days. We have in that hundred year period the equivalent of what would be millions of years of evolutionary time. And what do you have after all the radiation and mutation? Do you have a fruit fly that has evolved new genetic information? No, you don't. In fact, all you still have is a fruit fly. It hasn't evolved into anything else. So there is a ton of information to those experiments with the fruit flies. It is well known, well studied, and there are lots of things that they are trying to achieve by those various experiments. And it is far beyond the scope of this video to dive down such an incredible rabbit hole. But the fact of the matter is, these experiments aren't trying to make some kind of new fruit fly. That is entirely not the point. They are, and have successfully proven many elements of evolutionary theory rather thoroughly. And at no point has anyone working on these come along and claimed their Nobel Prize for utterly debunking the theory of evolution. Do you know why that is? Because they fucking haven't! Mutations don't prove evolution. That's simply not the mechanism that could get a single-celled organism to a human. There's more than one, but sure, whatever. I mean, clearly creationists are single-celled organisms. They're just piloting human-shaped mechs. It's the only thing that explains all the everything that you guys ever do and ever say. Number five, English peppered moths. Number five is moths. Well, I'll tell you something. If you don't know, the flailing meat suit that I call home has some of those children things living in his house. And one of them fucking loves moths. Like, she's actually kind of moth crazy. But don't you get them confused with butterflies, or she will slap the shit out of you with facts that it's not a butterfly. And actually, she's pretty chill about it, but she does still love them. Her favorite being the death's head moth, at least last time I checked. And you know what? That's pretty goddamn metal, so I'll allow it. We're told that English peppered moths provide an example of evolution in action. That's because, right, and this will blow your tiny little single-cell mind, it is. You see, before the Industrial Revolution, there were two varieties of English peppered moths. One dark-colored, one light-colored, but the light-colored was much higher in ratio than the dark-colored. But after the Industrial Revolution, the dark-colored became the more prominent color in the light, the fewer in the mix. And we're told that's because birds could see the light colored better, etc. And this was supposedly an example of natural selection. All right, a functional enough explanation. Although for some reason completely missing the why, which would of course be the selection pressure. And that is pollution, which was rampant during the Industrial Revolution. Meaning that the light colored ones were easier to find and the dark ones were better camouflaged on various surfaces. Okay, cool. How is that wrong? Because it literally happened and is well documented. The problem with this example is, number one, many of the pictures were faked because the English peppered moths don't often land on tree trunks, and the entire idea was flawed in that way. Wow, okay, so that was a criticism levied at the first guy to do the research on the moths, but uh, he wasn't the only person to do the research. But even if the criticisms were true, the moths were studied well beyond one fucking researcher. There were multiple other research studies done that confirmed his results by doing, oh, what's that thing called again? Oh, right, 
fucking science. But the second problem was that before the Industrial Revolution, the genetic information in the English peppered moth genome had genetic information for two varieties, light colored and dark colored, and after the genetic information was the same. That's irrelevant. I mean, you have been trying to discount what is clearly natural selection at play right here. And part of that is when there are already variants, depending on selection pressures, one will outcompete the other, sometimes to the extinction or near extinction of the less competitive version. Also, I would be fascinated to hear the creationism explanation for multiple versions of any particular critter. I imagine it's probably something like, cause God thought it was pretty. You know, cause God is a seven year old idiot child. Well, I mean... English pepper moths simply do not prove evolution. Again, again, again. Of course they don't on their own. They're just one of the many, 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 many things that go into the unbelievably big pile of stuff that, you know, does prove it. Right, next one. And number six, horse evolution. Oh, cool. That's like the one I showed earlier. If you were to look in your biology textbooks, you would see that horse evolution is often used as evidence that evolution really occurred. Yes, because it is. Again, as all these have been an excellent example of evolution in action, and one that is quite easy for your average high school student to understand, since at least with certain lines, it is a very clear what you might call A to B showing of how evolution works. To be fair, there's more complexity to it than that, but we shouldn't need to go into that, unless of course you're about to massively quote mine someone into saying something that they didn't say, but it's not like that ever happens constantly. You would see a, a picture of a very small animal, almost looks like a fox or something like that, evolving into modern horse. Uh, not gonna lie, but if that's what you think a fox looks like, maybe it's no wonder you can't fathom that evolution is a real thing that happens. Foxes look like this, my dude. Damn, it would explain a lot if you just can't tell the difference between multiple kinds of animals. Like you think that these two things are both elephants or some shit. But this scenario, it's fabricated. It's not true. It was made up. Uh, no. In fact, your explanation of it being made up is ironically the made up thing. It's very real and well understood example of evolution. Dude, if you project any harder, I'm going to have to start using you for PowerPoint presentations at the bi-monthly whiskey meetings. Okay, fine. They're not meetings. I just go to the pub and <laughs> it's more than twice a month. In fact, more than 50 years ago, Dr. George Gaylord Simpson said, <laughs> 50 years ago, of course. Do I even have to go on? Well, yes, I do, because I alluded to lying earlier, and, well, here we go. The uniform continuous transformation of Hierocotherium into Equus, so dear to the hearts of generations of textbook writers, never happened in nature. So first off, to be a petty asshole, that's 70 years ago, you fucking brain clot. Shocking that a creationist can't count. And secondly, I looked up your quote, and frankly, that representation of it is basically a fucking lie. It's a part of a longer quote, obviously, and he's not talking about it not being real. He's talking about the fact that it's much broader than just a straight line. And it's more like a tree, you know, those things they use all the fucking time in evolutionary explanations. That there are many variations and different species and subspecies or whatever the wording actually is, branching off because evolution is real. And he was in no way refuting that, you lying sack of rancid human effluence. Thank that was the last one, because I think if I had to listen to you lie for another minute longer, I might have to drink a bit of water. No, you're right. It's just not worth it. Another quadruple whiskey, please, barkeep. Ah, that's better. I love these meetings. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six's channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, 
Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-